Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and today we're going to take a quick look at the new asset library functionality that's included in Godot. This was added in Godot 2.1 uh, from the client end, and just uh, two days ago, uh, the web front end is now available, as is a new way of submitting assets to the asset library. So I thought I would take today to take a look at it. Now, this is a very important thing for game engines, and I think it's a very good move for Godot to add this. Now, the asset library gives you a quick and handy way of getting uh, predefined code, assets, etc., uh, very definitely in invaluable for a new developer to get in there and, you know, instead of using programmer art, pull down established stuff, some grab some existing code or plugins, etc. that will make your life easier. And the Godot approach is slightly different than, say, the Unity Asset Store or the um, Unreal Marketplace, I believe is what they call it, uh, in that this is not a store. All of the assets that are going to be on the Godot Asset Library are open source under one license or another, and we will see that shortly. Now, Godot itself, like I said, it was added in Godot 2.1. So this is Godot 2.1 that you're seeing here. So you need to have Godot 2.1 or later version to use the asset store. And it's very straightforward. You'll see across the top here, instead of just 2D, 3D, and script, we now have an asset library tab as well. You click that and it brings you to basically the front end of the asset library. Now, this is very new. So don't expect there to be a huge amount of stuff in there. There's only... Um, what, three pages of assets going on right now. Uh, nothing extremely impressive there yet, but this is just all. This is the beginning. Uh, in time, I expect this to grow uh, by leaps and bounds. And so as more time goes on, this will be a much more uh, capable tool. Uh, but if you want something, so here's an example of a fur shader. Uh, you click it, it brings up a description. There should be an image down here, but this one doesn't actually have one. So let's go down instead to this uh, platform 2D example. And you'll see there's the video link of what this uh, plugin actually brings. There's the description right here. There's a rating and you can easily rate it uh, right there, five star rating. And if you want it, just go ahead and click install and it'll bring it down. Um, now, if you wanna manage things later on, you've got your plugins link directly there so you can um, remove plugins potentially after the fact. But this is a very integrated way to get this stuff into the Godot engine. And it's used for, and look at the categories right now. This is an area where I find a bit of a flaw here. First off, there's no category for models, uh, which is confusing. There's nothing there for sprites, which is unfortunate. I would love to see a 2D and 3D asset category added here. And then what we've got is a little bit confusing because they've broken out 2D tools, 3D tools, and then tools into their own category. Well, there's a lot of overlap going on there. How many tools are not going to be for 2D or 3D? I don't know. I, I think that they could have just done tools for now and maybe split them out later on. Or... Uh, yeah, I, I think that that's a bit of a naming convention issue. And I think that the miss category is going to be overfold because there is no models category. But in time, you know, this will fill out and we'll see different things come in. But I would like to see some different categories. But you can filter down for just one specific area. For example, if you just want to look for a script, uh, you can find the script this way. So there's the script cast. So if you needed a logger class, click here and there is the code for a logger class and you can see there they have a graphic screenshot of what their actual code is and over here say we wanted the swipe detector same deal you got the description of it over there if you want it just go ahead and click install it will download and configure it for your use so right now limited use but over time this will definitely get more powerful and then you see also here you can sort by uh, the rating the number of downloads the name the cost, which is strange because everything has to be open source licensed, and when it was last updated. Uh, the other thing you can do over here is you can have it either coming from your local file system or from the Godot server. So obviously right now we're pulling this out from the Godot server. On that topic, let's jump over and look at the new web front end. So this was just published, um, I think it was about Halloween, possibly the day before Halloween. So a couple days ago, they made the... Um, the web front end for the Godot asset library public. Now you'll notice here that I'm actually logged in. Logged in, you've got the ability to submit new assets. But you'll see here, we've got the various different tools. We've got four pages here. We can switch by the number of um, pages we're gonna go by. Uh, we've got some pending assets that haven't been uh, approved yet, you can potentially see. Uh, switch on back, and it's the same sort of deal. So you could come in here, and here's that logger class we were looking at before. You click it, there's the preview of said class, and then you can ultimately view what composes this actual um, uh, plugin or module. Uh, you see over here, it's actually just a GitHub repository. So it brought us into here to the Godot logger. Um, you can drill down and into it. Oops, actually here, it's, just, it's actually just a GD script. So here's the script that makes up this particular logger. So ultimately, they are all just um, uh, GitHub repositories that are hosting these things. 
and you can see here under which license it is licensed. Now, this comes into effect when you actually want to go ahead and submit your own asset to the asset library. And you come in here and you go submit asset, you name it, you pick the category that it falls under, uh, you can version it if you wish, and then you pick where it's from, GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, GOGS, or CGIT, repository URL, um, and various other pieces, and then ultimately you have to pick your license. So these are the licenses that you are limited to right now with the, um, the Godot uh, asset library usage is you've got MIT license, the two GPL licenses, which are not gonna be compatible with very many games because if you use something that is GPL, um, it is like a virus into your code, which basically means that the rest of your code that touches it also has to be open source. Uh, I'm also kind of shocked that the LGPL isn't in here. Um, there's the Creative Commons license. Um, so there's a couple of missing licenses from here, and but it is limiting you to open source licensing, which might be an issue for some people if you wanted to publish things and actually sell them. This is not a store per se, it's a library. So that's a kind of a, a distinguishing difference of this versus those other engines I mentioned earlier. And then you can add your previews in. You can add up to three different previews with um, either a YouTube video or an image thumbnail that will be shown. We saw the uh, we saw actually examples of both in the client. And that's about it. That's how you submit an asset, and then you go ahead and submit. Now, it needs to obviously be approved, as we saw from the uh, front end there, which is nice because it keeps, keeps the spam out. Um, and that's essentially it. That's this new um, system that they've set up. Now, if you're actually wondering a little bit more details about how to go about submitting things, uh, the description is right here in this article. I will actually link this down below. So if you want a little bit more detail about the web front end, uh, you can see it here. They've also got a little bit of a talk about the uh, front end, a couple more things coming. So right now, uh, rating assets is not implemented in the beta yet. Uh, list of existing issues are available right here. And I hope going forward, they do uh, fix up those categories so that you can you know, upload assets and models and such. It's weird that an asset library doesn't have room for 3D models or animation files, etc., cetera, um, other than just the generic MISC category. So let's hope that gets fixed up soon. Uh, but for the most part, it's a nice start. It's a good approach. If you are a good Doe developer and you want to kickstart the community, take some of the code that you've created or some of the assets you've created and, at, and run it up to the, uh, the asset library if you can. And a really nice way to get the community started and going. But, you know, it is cool to see an open source asset library built around open source technology on open source licenses for an open source game engine. So I can see this having the potential to get huge in the future, but really it's all up to you, the community. If you guys embrace this, this could get really powerful. If this becomes a place for shovelware and crap, well, it, it becomes a place for shovelware and crap. So really, it is what we make of it. But the technology and the tools are there. It is working. It integrates directly into Godot. The experience is pretty seamless, but it is a work in progress. So do expect refinements. Uh, do expect, hopefully, better categories in the future. And of course, only in time will we get more useful content in there. So uh, hopefully, this is embraced and becomes an excellent thing going forward. All right, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please do click like. If you like game dev related news, technology previews, reviews, etc., please do click subscribe. We have all kinds of that stuff here. All right, see you all later. Goodbye.